Ultra Near Field might just be the greatest innovation for studio monitors in the last five years. But before we get too carried away, let's just reel it back a tiny bit. You gotta be quicker than that. Ultra Near Field, what is it? Seriously. The term ultra near field describes the detailed auditory range at 0.8 meters or about two and a half feet in length. I like to think of it as a sphere that just extends from your speakers like a bubble. So whilst you are inside this bubble, you get a very detailed reference of the music, but as you start to walk away, it starts to muffle at an exponential rate. Though this range may be small, it allows it to work in almost any environment and has a lot of special advantages such as being able to use it accurately in an untreated room that means you can get an accurate reference without needing a ton of space or money for acoustic sound treatment and that just scratches the surface at what's possible with these things <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the other advantages of this unique system. Well, first off, this system thrives in small environments. If you have a small desk or surface to set this thing up, you're pretty much solid. And since you also don't need acoustic sound treatment, this acts as a pop-up studio wherever you have an electrical outlet and a surface to set it up on. Now we're gonna take a look at the specifics of this system we're using today in just a little bit. But we gotta talk about the noise level of this bad boy. I mean, this system is a no-brainer for producers that have neighbors or roommates instead of buying giant studio monitors in a subwoofer I mean your whole neighborhood will be thanking you so ultimately this system is great for music producers who just don't have a lot of studio space who have a small desk who don't have an acoustically sound treated studio who want a second reference system in a different location who have neighbors or roommates or a noise curfew who travel and want a full system that doesn't require 10 suitcases to carry and for anyone in between. Awesome, so now that we understand what the ultra near field technology is and how it works, we're gonna go ahead and jump into my experiences and thoughts on using this system, but first, Let's talk about the specific system that I'm using. This is the Kali Audio IN-UNF. And for anyone that is familiar with the Kali Audio IN-5s or IN-8s, this UNF system is using the same speakers. So we're dealing with only the very top quality. For anyone who may be unaware, Kali Audio makes the popular LP6 speakers, which are similar to the yellow Rokit 5s and other consumer grade studio monitors, but the Kali Audio quality always destroys the competition. We've also released a recent video on the Kelly Audio Dual Subwoofer, which I really think more producers should look into for their home studios. So if that interests you, I'll leave a link for that at the top of this video right now so you can watch that one next. But let's talk about the hardware. The system is comprised of two eyeball speakers and a bass box. However, this is a three-way system. If you're wondering, these speakers are coaxial with the tweeter sitting right in the middle of the mid-range driver. And that makes our three ways, which is better than a lot of the standard standard studio monitors that just have the sub and the tweeter. So we have the dual 4.5 inch long excursion woofers. Whoa, that sounds nice. Four inch optimized profile paper mid-range drivers, <laughs> actual mouthful, and one inch textile dome tweeters. And Kelly Audio tuned this system and accounted for all the reflections from your desk to your speakers to the bass box and back to your ears for a neutral frequency response, giving us a valid monitoring system. So they're claiming that the sound you get from this system is the same as a pair of their IN8, but if they were in an acoustically treated room at a reasonable distance. Brother. And as Kelly Audio always does, they gave us several flexible setup options dependent on your given situation and environment. On the side of the base box over here, there are a series of switches which correlate to the setup instructions to each position to work properly. And once you configure that and set up the speakers in the right positions, you're ready to go. They even go as far to give you paper cutouts for setting up the speaker locations properly. You can line this paper up with the base box and it will tell you exactly where to place the speakers, whether you have the bass box flat or upright. But a huge feature of this system is that you do not need an audio interface to use it. You do, however, have the option to use TRS cables to use an audio interface if you'd like. Otherwise, you can plug it into a 3.5 millimeter aux or connect it via USB to your computer, which is what I've been doing. Not to mention that this thing is fairly easy to travel with. I'm sure you can find some spherical cases that you can fit these speakers into so 
they don't get damaged while you're traveling. But for artists who are on the road or who travel a lot, it really doesn't get better than this. Let's talk about these eyeball shaped speakers. They feel very high quality and they have some weight to them. These silicone stands right here allow you to position these speakers however you need. But seriously, if someone breaks in, you could hawk one of these at the robber's face. Then it's gonna be cold tonight, asshole. And then we have the bass unit or the control unit, however you wanna call it. We have the two subs, one on the left side, one on the right side, protected by this metal cage. And since these speakers are sitting vertical to one another, the vibrations that they make will cancel each other out so you can expect this box not to move, vibrate, or do anything except for produce that sexy bass tone. On the left side of our box, we have all of our inputs. We have the TLC, aux, and USB. We also have the fuse box, or I mean the EQ compensations, which is tuned to fix all the reflections from the system. And on the right side here, we have our power source and power switch. We have our speaker inputs, our beautiful volume control knob, and a button for the sleep and wake modes. And when you turn the system on, this logo on the front lights up with a beautiful blue hue, which lets you know it's on, and it's pretty neat if I must say so myself. And up until this point, I've never seen a sleek three-way monitoring system that's small and works just like this one. Have you? Let me know in the comments below. So we talked about what an ultra near field is. We took a look at the brilliant system by Cali Audio for creating this field. But now let's talk about how it sounds and my thoughts on using this system for the better part of the last two weeks but I gotta come clean about something. Sweetwater and the amazing people that work there sent me this Cali Audio INUNF system to use. I saw how unique and awesome this system was and wanted to share this new ultra near field technology, which may just be the next biggest innovation for studio monitors. But as we do over here on this channel, I'm always gonna give you guys a fully honest and transparent review and recommendation based on how I feel after using this system. And Sweetwater is just the best place to get your instruments, MIDI keyboards, speakers, mics, plugins, and anything music related with the best customer service in the world. So thank you to Sweetwater for sending this over and supporting the channel. Now let's jump back in. When I first opened this thing up, it was such a pain in the butt. No, it was dead easy. So I ended up setting the system up on our kitchen table downstairs. You can see we're set up here on this table. We're touching this back wall, but you can also see two our left here is the workout room. So for mixing sake, this room is an absolute nightmare. But over the past week or so, I've made and leveled three different beats because I really wanted to compare them to some of my other recent beats and see how they sounded. Am I getting an appropriate mix? Am I doing better or worse? And crazy enough, these have been some of the best mixed beats I've made lately. I was surprised when I pulled up these mixes in my actual studio and they sounded amazing. And I'll give you guys a short demo of these beats so that you can hear them, but don't judge too hard. One thing that stands out to me in these beats, besides the fact that they're leveled pretty decently, is the use of panning. I think I did an excellent job with that. I feel like I was able to get a really great grasp of the stereo field and positioning different drums and elements in the space. And the bass was very easy to control and get to sound right in these beats. The sound selection was on point. I could hear right away if the 808 or the drum was gonna work in this beat or if it wasn't. I was surprised that all the detail I could hear in the low end and just all together, it's a legit system. It sounds really great. I had sparkly details in the high end and I had no trouble cleaning up the mids. And to top it off, it was a lot of fun to use it. And if you must know, I trust it. I trust the decisions I was making when I was using this system. In fact, I wouldn't mind bringing this thing back home for the holidays to meet my family if I had any. But lastly, let me tell you my final thoughts, recommendations, and conclusions. I love this system, and I think I got some of my best mixes using this thing. And it was a ton of fun making music because everything's just super compartmentalized 
in this two and a half feet zone, right in your bubble. But as far as the ultra near fill technology is concerned, if you remember the first beat that I shared with you guys, I made and mixed that while there was water boiling in the room and just a lot of noise going on. The ultra near field kind of drowns out all of the noise in the surrounding area and really allows you to focus in and hone in on the mix. I 100% think that this ultra near field technology is going to be one of the biggest things in the next couple years once it catches on. Now, as far as the Kali Audio INUNF system, I think it's fantastic. It's all very high quality and all the hardware that's included is not chintzy at all. Not even a bit. They ain't scamming. But this system might not be the end all be all for all music producers. Because while it does give you a fantastic reference over the range it is able to cover, there will always be the biggest and baddest speakers with the largest subwoofers and the best acoustic treatment that will be able to offer you a better reference. But for people who have limited space and limited funds in all of the unique circumstances that I mentioned previously, this thing is the bee's elbows. I'm just blown away by how great the system sounds. I just can't get over it. For the price of $5.99, you get an entire system that doesn't even require an audio interface. Mic drop. Guys, I will leave a link to this system in the description below so you guys can go ahead and check it out if you're interested. But if you guys want to know if using a subwoofer in your home studio will help you make better decisions when you're mixing your low end, definitely check this one out next.